<laughs> she went <laughs> real good. <laughs> What's going on guys? Dan here, DD Speed Shop as per usual. So, working on Tri-5 junk. It's already late. Let's see how it goes. Anyways, been lazy. Uh, been, well, I've been feeling sore, so I haven't been working on my back too much. But uh, I think it's rocker time. So I got a call. The floor pan is in. I'm going to go pick that up tomorrow. Um, yeah. So I got to get the rockers on. So I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm just going to peel this back door off. That'll give me all the access. And I can just open the door. And then all that's left is the post, which I can take out or just kind of have hovering there or whatever. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with these panels. You know, a lot of you guys actually said in the comments, I guess just the four doors had this like little outrigger piece because in a two door, this is tied into the quarter and gets a lot more strength, which, well, it makes a lot of sense. And I guess I wasn't thinking about that. So I could probably take all that out and uh, weld the rocker in. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, everything is still all piecemealed together and stuff like that. Uh, I think I'll probably put some of this in the in the rocker once I take it out, kind of feed it in because it's going to be open. So feed that in for a little extra strength, just kind of cause, and I'll go from there. Man, people are panicking about the order I'm doing this in, and I hear you. I mean, the rocker is probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, and maybe the floor keep all the strength in it before you cut the roof off. But uh, they're the last part I got when I ordered stuff, so that's the way it went. And ultimately. I wanted to see it look like a convertible and make sure it wasn't going to be ridiculous before I spent all the money on sheet metal. So they didn't jive back and forth. What are you going to do? The other thing is, this thing is so cut up. If it don't fit, I'll shim this, weld that, cut this. It is what it is. We're not talking about some original convertible and stuff like that. And I still have a fair bit of faith in this floor. I mean, I've taken off them out. That, uh, that big center tunnel has a lot of strength and ultimately... I mean, this is going to make up for the rocker. When we had the thing up in the air and everything, we only popped a couple of little welds, which ended up falling right back into place. So it's as straight as it was. Not saying it's perfect, but uh, it ain't any worse. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to, like I said, break that off, open the door, and then we'll see what we got. The rocker should go in pretty easy because I'm going to slice the floor six inches away, the whole thing of it out and uh, put this rocker in. The rocker's pretty much full length. It is meant to tie into this piece here. I don't know if I'll have enough or not. I have to scab something together. But even once that goes on, I mean, the door's sticking way out. We can push that in. We can start kind of tacking it all together. So we'll have the strength. I'd like to get that all in. I would really like the floor to go in from the top on this one instead of uh, lifting it. I think that is a lot of force on it, but I'm not against doing it. So we'll see. Because if that's the case and you get it all together, I mean, all I have to do is maybe, you know, move the post or do something. Or, I mean, slide the floor in one way and wrap it over. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, the, the steering column comes right out because it's been chopped. Once all this junk is out, it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, you kind of give it the old eyeball down. Right where my finger is, that's where the rocker is. So the floor is on that side. So the only thing that would stick out is the, uh, is the post, which in all reality... We could just kind of bend over or do a couple of a couple of cuts, take it right out. And then, uh, yeah, put in the bushings, get the floor in, get it all kind of clamped together. Again, this thing is going to be all tacked together. Make sure everything kind of opens and closes and stuff like that. The front clip, I mean, people are giving me attitude. I get that it wasn't fitting the front clip to the doors and stuff. The front clip is so beat up and haggard and rotted out and all that. Uh, it, I don't know. If it was factory and all that stuff, it'd be a little different. I went with the way the doors are. It is what it is. We'll figure it out. So let's get this all stripped down off the side. See what it looks like. And uh, rockers going easy. I mean, these are they're simple to do. I'll uh, I trim the front and I'll butt weld it the whole way in. It fits under a little uh, A pillar. Was it this car that's rotted out? I don't remember. We'll get the door open and see. And uh, yeah, weld it all together. I mean, uh, the more weld you put on, the stronger it is, right? Pretty simple math.
rockers come out. Uh, the post dropped just a hair, but I mean, I think that's just because it's got some weight on it and stuff, so it's not too bad. The whole car didn't twist, twang, bang, do any of those things. It didn't jam the, the uh, disc up in your cutting. I always find if you're cutting and either the gap gets wider or it, you know, pulls the power of the grinder. She's getting tighter. Didn't do that. I mean, really, what we took out there, <laughs> there wasn't much strength to it. So whatever it has, it still has. So next, I cut it wide at the back. I don't know how much we're going to be able to fit in there. The front I'll get in there, I gotta do just clean up a little bit on the on the underside. This is actually in really good shape for oh, my legs. These tri fives usually this rots out. So the old rocker, it's actually double wall, so I just kinda get in there with a zip cut, clean it all up a little bit, and then we'll just plunk that in there. And we'll be able to weld it solid the whole way around. So you get a pile of strength right to the A pillar. And then we can uh, ultimately run it back to here. And I mean once we cut that out, it's the same thing, it fits in flush. Once we get those, we'll line up the, uh, the B pillar or whatever you call it on these hard tops. I assume it's the same. Make sure the door still kind of lines up, which in all honesty isn't too bad. It fell down one tack weld worth that much. So, should be able to kind of do that. So, a few tacks front, two tacks back. I believe once it's welded front and back, it'll naturally lift the post up and we'll fit the door back, we'll fit the quarter back, the ports or uh, the quarter skin. I mean, that's it. There's, there's not a whole lot of thinking to it. Uh, the only thing is, because we're actually welding rockers on, which it wouldn't have on a typical two-door convertible, we've got to make sure we're happy with it, then burn it all in, because a lot of it's going to be hidden by the quarter panel. Well, guys, I'm gonna love it. It's the next day. Uh, the guy who bought the 56 actually came by. I need some parts, and we started BSN, and then, uh, well, I stopped working. I was here this morning, and I just kind of tested the one rocker in. Overall, it's actually not too bad, I think. Um, the gaps, a little, a little extra right there, but I think the big problem is, I mean, that's a long span. It doesn't support it, so once we get the floor in, then I'll just put a little floor jack on it with a 2x4, and when I weld it to the floor, it'll hold it. Now, I did get the floor. That's actually what I did this morning. A little scratch and dent sale. So this is like the last floor that was available in uh, North America. I got a bit of a deal on it because there's a few, a few whammos in it. But, uh, hey, beggars can't be choosers. I chop right there anyways, no big deal. There was that dent. I think there's another dent in the tunnel on the other side. Yeah, right there. But when there's no other floors available, is either make something myself or take this. And hey, I got a deal on it, so I was more than happy to take this. Anyways, thanks, my buddy Reg or Walker Auto. The only thing that's not in stock yet was the uh, mount it sits on. So I do have. Um, this is what's left over from the, uh, Black Widow, because I didn't use, I didn't do the front or back, uh, motor mounts. I think I have some old ones that I kept that were kind of mediocre, but worst case I can kind of chop a hockey puck or do something, but that's enough. I think I have six. So there's, uh, I think I use eight, but I'll reuse the back two, the front two. Oh, well, hopefully I have the back two. The front two I'm not going to have, but I'll just use some miscellaneous ones and then I'll figure something out on the side. So, we're going to get, again, it's just going to get all tacked together. If it all goes to hell once I get the proper mount in, we'll cut the tack bolts, let her do its thing. You know, a little bit of floor jacking, a little bit of measuring, and uh, while we're all back together. But anyways, we have enough to make this thing sturdy. So, I just tacked this piece back on, it's literally on the one tack weld, because at the bottom and stuff, I still got to, do all the finish welds and stuff you can see down there so i'm happy with how it fits so i'm going to pull this off i'm going to burn that in 100 percent proper it will give us unfortunately a bit more of a gap down here than i would have liked but uh it does line up perfectly there the door's fitting properly so it is what it is we'll get the door welded in properly we'll get this welded in properly and we have to build a little filler piece or again floor jack that up once we uh Let's get the floor in there and that'll, that'll kind of eliminate some of that as well. I think. 
there's not a whole lot of instructions on doing a chop it up a convert or a hard top into a convertible so i think i'm doing it right i'm sure you guys are furiously typing saying i'm doing it wrong but i'm gonna keep uh, pressing forward so anyways i'm gonna get this rocker burned in on the other side you know what maybe i'll do a lot more filming and show you what i'm doing and how i fit it and we'll kind of do that because uh yet again i didn't know what i was doing and i wanted to screw up uh without the camera on but uh, i don't know works sturdy because they're gonna have to take all this bracing out to get the floor in right but rockers in chop all the floor out and then hopefully uh, merle clover will slide it in or maybe i can just do it myself i guess we'll see what happens either way it'll be a fun struggle so i've been thinking i'm thinking here's what my plan's going to be well we're going to take this rocker out we'll film from that side so you can kind of see um this door still uh it's close is not bad for all that screwing around so i'm happy with that um my concern is well when we're doing the floor and i want to go in from the top down or whatever i do whether it goes in from the top down or the bottom up i don't have a way to lift this thing equally so I, like i was tilting the other ones with the engine crane that's probably not the best move um so when the floor is out of it the only thing that's going to be securing this thing is the rockers which is fine so i think we'll do the rockers when i take this out i'm going to weld some of this uh one by one you know what it is corner or something like that into the inside of the rockers for a little add strength i'm going to leave the back quarter skins off um so i think we might have to pull the post back just a little bit for it to fittings they do stick in the floor just just a scotch um but we want to keep where they are this way so i'm thinking we'll do that we'll take the doors off both sides or the back corner pieces off i'll then brace this one's already done i'll probably redo it a little better front to back so the post can't really go anywhere and you know keep it low so it's secured we can close the doors and well this one will weld shut that one all or no that one will weld shut this one will latch maybe even weld them whatever so we'll have from the door you know whatever the belt line down to a solid rocker it ain't going to go anywhere so that's just have all the strength so it doesn't uh talk with itself in half and then the floor if i pre-trim it i should be able to slide it in and go so i'll have to climb in and out of the car uh, with a set of stool or whatever it is once i start getting the floor out of it but I think that's probably the way to go because all this junk is going to have to come out to get the floor in. I don't see any other way of doing it at home. Those are my plans, anyways. But before we do that, at least I'm going to do. Uh, ooh, this side's rotten. I'm going to chop the uh, rocker out of this side. So we'll do a few clips of that. Take this back door piece off. And yeah, keep giving her. Okay, so we got the rocker out. I just want to show you here before I carry on. I'll get it all kind of cleaned up. See the big chunks out and then you just gotta, you know, get around the ends, which is a little tedious front and back. But what I want to show you is how these things rot out. So there's no doubt in my mind this whole car is original. Rusty, but original. And you can just see how much, like that's, I don't know, a third full garbage and dirt and all that stuff the the drainage on these things is just terrible and then you can see up and this is the brace same thing so that just gets rotted and these things always 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 get packed with dirt and then rot from the inside out so i mean if you guys would have just in like the 60s gotten your hands and knees and pressure washed out these rockers on these worthless cars like 50 60 years later i would have to, i would have saved all this time but uh so there you go this one's just uh, hanging in space now. So we're going to have to make sure. I, I cut that little brace out. But uh, once we get the rocker in, we'll double check the door. Fits good again. And we'll brace it all back up. So I'm going to charge batteries a little bit. In the meantime, I'll be uh, 
trim in front and back, and the new rocker, they fit so nice. Like, I just trim literally just these kind of stamped edges off, and they just fit in at work. It's so good. And the back of this side, I'm not super concerned because we have that quarter panel piece that's going to go on, so it'll wrap over everything anyway. So we'll just blindly weld it in so it's nice and strong, and then we'll, uh, we'll weld the door back on, but probably from, like, you know, here down or whatever, we'll use that panel. Uh, well, believe it or not, this side fought me to the point of frustration. Um, and, and the reason, actually, it was so solid, it didn't just fall apart. You had to get all these little, like, up in the corners and all that was a freaking thing with plasma and everything. But, uh, we got it together. The gap is, well, it's not bad. It's a little gappy, but what are you going to do? Now, what I did, just as a quick test, I disconnected the, the post. And it is perloppy, so I just actually weld the door to it for a little more strength, but it's not going to go anywhere. My only concern is, once the floor is out, <laughs> that's all that is connecting the car together. So, I put a little brace in, so I don't think we have any this way movement, I'm hoping, anyways. So I'm going to do the same on that side, weld a little bar in just like I did there. I'll close the door, and well, weld that door shut. Then I'm going to start kind of cutting out um, the floor. I'm going to try and keep the tunnel in on each side. Then I'll get in there once I take this, these bars out. I'm going to re-weld them in the uh, rocker, on the inside of the rocker. So it'll be, you know, C-channel with that welded in. Whatever, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's what I got. The doors will be welded shut and tight, so that's good. We're going to have a strut bar across there kind of acting as hopefully the amount of strength it would have there and the tunnel's the last thing so I'll get everything kind of cleaned up where I want it and then uh, we'll get the floor dialed together Paige Murr put the Murr signal up it's actually just a mustache and then he'll come over and uh, right before he gets here I'll zip that out real quick the tunnel because there's no real bracing or nothing in the tunnel uh, side to, obviously side to side is irrelevant there's nothing to touch anything we're just worried about the front to back at least I am currently and then we'll go from there. It seems like a good idea in my head. I'm sure you guys are judging, which is fine. And uh, once we get that going, I have enough hockey pucks or whatever it is to kind of put the floor in, get it tacked together, get some strength in it, see how motivated I am to keep giving her. But uh, as long as the doors, the gap still is decent, the doors open and close. Realistically, once the floor is in and attached to the rockers, and the rockers are attached front to back, the post can easily be moved now because the post ain't really doing too much uh, other than that little bar that I can weld on my quarter pieces and it should be plenty strong, I'm um, thinking. So we'll get the camera set up and I'll start uh, plasming out uh, each side here. It shouldn't be too much work, famous last words. Uh, just real ugly like, and then I'll trim the front and back proper once I uh, get all this junk out and I'm happy. All right, let's get after it.
check that out. So no floor. Um, I uh, plasma it all out and I just cleaned up the front and the back a little bit. Kind of eyeball where I want the back, the front. Uh, we're going to butt it right up. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's definitely a little, a little flex, but uh, when I was cutting everything out, nothing, you know when you're cutting something out, it wants to like, you know, squeeze together or expand. That didn't happen, so I think I'm fine. Mur stopped by. He had no issues. Well, Mur has no issues, and I have no issues. Um, so I'm going to clean up a little bit. Before I do that real quick, I'm going to trim this floor pan. I'm going to call Murray. He's going to help me out where it's going to literally carry it over, plop it in. I'm thinking we'll just kind of pull in the door post. Shook, it'll fall into place. Literally put a few tack welds in, and then that's where I'm going to leave it for today in this video. Because it's, I'm tired I'm giving her on this stuff. I'm load all this junk up. So I'm going to pull this thing out and I'll show you. I just like I stamp uh, holes around where the sills are, top and bottom. I'm going to cut this right at this mount. It's on the car. I cut it down about there so it'll overlap an inch or so. And then that'll give me lots of, uh, you know, meat to kind of cut through, just like we did on everything else. You, you know, you layer it and we'll run the zip cut through both, put it down. Very simple. And at the front here, um, you can weld these. I'll probably put some holes in it, but I also like just to grind right across and I'll uh, kind of stitch it all together. Seems like there's a bit of a gap at the front of these floor pans. I've done lots of tri-fives. I don't know what everything else is like. Uh, the Dodge I did was pretty good and stuff, but like A-bodies and all those things like, uh, like Chevy stuff I have never done. This is a sedan floor, which is slightly different than a hard top and probably a convertible, but it's what they had, it's what's available right now, and the way the world is, you take what you can get. So we're gonna put it in. Um, I'll probably have to make a few extra mounts because there are extra body mounts, which I'll do after. Which really is just like, gonna be a, a body mount and a nut and bolt, I think is all I'm gonna do. And then uh, the hard tops had a brace that go across the back floor. I don't know if the convertibles do or not, but that'll all be kind of down the road. So I think we should be good. Lots of structure in it now. Getting the floor in, we'll tie it right back together. Once the floor is in, I'll just tack on the quarters again. And realistically, I think that's what I'm gonna, uh, I'll do that, and that's where I'm gonna leave it maybe tomorrow on the next video. I'll do that and maybe put the trunk lid on and stuff. Because what I really wanna do, I think motor trans should be in, get all the weight on this thing, get the fuel tank in it, get some fuel in it, get the whole kit and caboodle how it's gonna be, and then put on some flat ground, see what it's gonna look like. Has it really twisted one or the other? Because if it's all solid weld together, that's a lot of work to take apart. Versus now it's a few welds here and there and I can jack it up, put a spacer in, do whatever I gotta do and make it work. So I'll see you in the driveway, cutting up this uh, floor pan. Okay, so we're on the driveway. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna split it right across here. The whole way, just a zip cut, real rough cut, that'll fall off. We're golden. Along here on the bottom, I'm gonna use this tool. This is MERS, but uh, it's like a flanging tool. So one side, you see how it's different. That's for, you wanna flange two panels together. It'll uh, make a little like ridge you can put it on. And on the bottom side, it's a hole pipe. Oh, the pressure is kicked on. But, gonna slide it on. There you go. We're just gonna kinda of randomly do whatever you know. That far. This floor pan is uh, a little bit of travel damage, so I'll get a pair of pliers, pull it all out. But same thing, top, bottom. Get that on there. And that's that. And then the front will do the same thing. We'll flange the, because it'll have a flat spot. So we'll do it that way. Something along like this. Same idea. Two pieces will put together. I'm also going to grind this leading edge because I'll probably stitch the panel and stuff like that all right. So we'll set the camera up, I'll get this floor pan done, I'll call Mer while I'm cleaning up, and then we'll uh, throw this thing in. Do you believe these are like a thousand dollars?
Okay, so the floor is uh, as prepped as it's going to be. We got to show Murs here. Yeah. We called in the heavies. So I show this here, babe. So I, this whole frame is painted. We paint the top. Everyone gives me attitude. I never paint the top of the frame. It's painted. Why um, to paint it though? No one's going to see it. I know. That's what I always think. Prevent the rust. Um, <laughs> We're using no weld through primer, all those other comments you guys recommend. Now, I didn't do any sort of stiffening and stuff like that, and honestly, Murr said this is fine, the way it's gonna work. And as you know, Murr, 40-year uh, professional body man, knows what's going on. <laughs> he can, you know, paint something black at night and it'll just look perfect in the morning. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead and slide this floor in. Should be, should be good. Nothing can go wrong. You wanna be on this side, there's a little more room. Sure. Whatever you want. Are we are we putting it the front side in front, or are we gonna do it backwards and then change it? Oh. <laughs> Where's that one joke? Floor in backwards one time. One time. <laughs> down first. There's a piece of steel there. Yeah. Um, you know what we can do is just that door, well that door shut it off. Yeah, it's got a spot on it. <laughs> well, this is embarrassing. Uh, well, can't you put this side straight down? There you go. I just need a little bit of love. Yeah. Okay. Please rest it on your door. I'll do the same thing here. On the door? I was gonna, yeah, just go past it and I'll light my side a little. Okay. Well, on this side's free. Why don't, oh, okay. So they're both free. Uh, I think you're going to have to put it in like that yeah. somewhere. So your side to go down first. Yeah. I think it really has to stand up. It's called the door. Yeah, but wouldn't it work if you just stood it like this and put it in? Is it just as wide that way? Well, this will go in down there, won't it? The front? I don't know. And then it does? Yeah. I can play. Way too out. narrow with that piece that sticks out. on this side and three inches on that side. That's a lot of bending. If you had one post out, you could do it, but I don't know if you can bend <coughs> bend two. We'll just cut one post out real quick. Okay.
Is that three inches ahead, you mean? It's three inches into the, the... Oh, into the thing. That okay. post has to come off, too. We'll lift it up so that corner goes underneath the dash. It doesn't open, does it? See if I can get... It's way, it's way too wide. The post has to come like we're miles away. Uh, see if we could just get that angle up uh, here, but it's, you know, put it diagonally right from there, but I don't think that's enough to overcome it. Uh, lift that corner, the back. No, lift that one, just lift that so it's not hooked. Not even the just like this, but you're, you're yes. mangling the door and stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and cut it open. She went <laughs> real good. <laughs> way out. Now it's past the pump. <clears throat> so that's good. And on the front, she'll go in. On, my, on your side. Try to center it. welded with the doors on it wouldn't happen but now you've removed all that. Well this would be the same spot I just re-weld this and so I'll yeah. just jack up and put it on. Well is there anything that you can jack like up here because that would do it. Nothing there that's because that's what it is. It's bent right 
you know, to this this thing right here is where it's bent. If you lift that up, then this will go ahead, and then this will all come up. So. It's not even that bad. Also, the door posts stay. Then we'll just lift it and latch it. Here. I'm open to other ideas, Mer. Is it moving? I feel like I'm in the kitchen zone. Yeah, it's well, Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's shifting the doors when you do that. I don't know how much force you can put on it though. Uh, I would say you'd stop there and see if we can. Really good on your side. The door is moving up as you do that. So it's definitely yeah, this door fits now. Yeah, yeah I can weld this door back together. It's exactly where it was. Hmm. Yeah, the door got perfect. I'll show you guys. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna weld this up real quick. I don't think this is the way that the GM intended. I don't know. I'm just guessing. The next convertible you make out of a car, maybe do that before you cut the roof off. I'd have the floor. You sound like the commenters. I, I know. Who side are you on, Mark? And I'm here live. You can go past your thing. That is perfect now. I know I can just a little bit. There we go. It's just like it did before. Pan has to go ahead just to scotch, but once it drops down, it'll fit. That ain't too bad. Just gotta weld the door post back in. I don't know how you're quite gonna slide that ahead a bit. That's exactly what it needs, but that seems pretty tight in there. Oh, I think it'd be fine. Last me up for me. Almost touching. Move, moving a little bit. The is, side that supposed to be, is that supposed to be flush or overlap? Flush. The mm -hmm. center of the tunnel is flush, the other ones never do. You got a you got a vice grip them. So okay. you just do whatever the center is well, and then well your front is definitely flush now. And then also it drops down, mm -hmm. which will then make it fit a little bit. That's yeah, not bad. There's a little gap you on that side, but all right, let's weld these doors up real quick and uh, finish off video. And enough, I read enough of a nice comments. Oh, oh man, this is bad. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> we got her together. Uh, definitely had a, a small issue, but we just, you know, used the old garage winch and uh, fold it back ahead. Uh, after we were talking about it, what would have been smart is putting a couple of strut bars from the cowl to the frame forward, that way it wouldn't have fallen back, and that really would have been no issue because the back's bolted down, the front would have been bolted down. So we pulled her head, put the doors on, I put the posts in, I welded those, I then re kind of re-welded the, the back, I just want to see if it was all going to fit, and everything, all the spot welds, or tack welds, whatever, all lined up in the exact same spot as I had them before, before we had uh, <laughs> folded the car in half. <laughs> So like everything there lines up, I mean, you know what I mean? I did, uh, before I had the quarter piece on first and then the door, but this way with the door, I'd put the door on first, the quarter overlaps the door a little, but everything will fit just fine. There's no issues there. Um, the front of the floor is good. The back has to be trimmed to fall down, but you know what? I think this is where we're gonna leave this video. So uh, you guys can have your, your time to comment about the, uh, the smarts of this. I just don't see another way of doing it. I mean, we didn't have, we don't have a lift, and had we done it uh, lifting the front up, it would have folded the exact same way. There just wasn't a strength in it, and I'm sure everyone said it already. But uh, 
doing the floor and all that stuff before I cut the roof off? Yeah, I hear you. The problem is, my problem was, buying the floor, buying all these convertible panels and all that stuff took time and money. And I didn't want to pull the trigger on well, probably a couple of thousand bucks with sheet metal if I thought it was going to look stupid. Uh, but I didn't want it to look just like a 57 Chevy with the roof cut off. It has to look like a convertible. And I think it looks like a convertible. So I pulled the trigger and bought all the stuff. Now that I 100% know and I'm confident, yeah, I probably put the floor in before I chopped the doors and all that junk off. It would have been rockers in, lift it up, put the roof on, and the four door and everything, put the floor in, put it together, weld it, and then start customizing. But uh, the next Tri 5 Chevy four door I convert into a convertible, I'll do it that way. Deal? All right. Well, I'm done for the day. We're just done. We're done. And, uh, <laughs> It's time for a little supper. I'll be back at it tomorrow and we'll get the uh, the sucker all welded together. Like I said, once it's all kind of together, I want to back it out, look at it, make sure it's not I'm sure it's fine. And then I want to put the motor and trans in. So you want to come over tomorrow and put the motor and trans in? Motor and trans, sure. Pool will be open. Pool will be open. Oh, okay. That sounds like a plan. So thanks for watching and being so nice in the comments on this video and this whole project. <laughs> Should I say like, share, and subscribe? <laughs> I'm sure they're furiously sharing it with their worst enemy. <laughs> Look at this idiot and his long hair and his, and his father, who's got no better judgment. Everyone want more Murr. Murr was part of one of the stupid, couple, you are part of the car beam swap body uh, on chassis change, mm -hmm. stupidest thing, and this stupidest thing. So, yeah. what do you think of Murr now? <laughs> All right, see you in the next video.